greetings to all of you in the conference. I'm coming to you live, sort of, from New York City in the Chrysler Building, and I'm very happy to be with you virtually. One of the great things about the planet today is that we can all be together, if not physically, through the wonders of digital technology. And as we will see, as I talk about cities in the modern world, we'll see that technology actually plays a very important role. As some of you no, I have been thinking all of my life about democracy and the crisis of democracy and the ways in which we can address democracy. And we start today at a point where there is a genuine crisis in democracy in the nation state around the world, whether you look at the United States or England or France or Brazil, you see nations increasingly dysfunctional in the face of the multiple global problems they face. And that's the result of a fundamental dilemma that gets harder and harder to resolve. The dilemma is this. We live in a 21st century world of interdependent challenges. Challenges that are posed by global warming, global pandemics, global markets, global technology, global terrorism, all cross-border problems that we have to face on a global basis. But we respond to this crisis through independent 17th century sovereign nation states that are very bad at working together with one another. In my book, If Mayors Rule the World, I've suggested that it may be time to change the subject, to change the subject from presidents and prime ministers to mayors, from states, nation states, to cities, from those passive folks who watch television and vote once in a while and think that's what democracy is about, to the active, engaged citizens of civil society who people the world's cities and make cities work. Time to start thinking about a different political instrument, and that instrument is the city. What I want to suggest is that the pragmatism and practicality of mayors, the trust levels they exact from their citizens, still in the 60s and 70s, most trust levels for presidents and prime ministers are 30 or 40 percent, and the U.S. Congress has a trust level of, if not minus eight, uh, plus eight points, meaning nine out of ten Americans don't trust their own uh, Congress people. And that low trust for national officials is rife around the world, whether we're talking about France, China, Britain, Brazil, or the United States. But our trust in cities, our trust in mayors, in our local officials, who as neighbors do work pragmatically, solve problems, provide medical services, education services, transportation, pick up the garbage, provide sewerage, do port transportation, do all of those things that make life go round for ordinary citizens. Mayors are a different kind of politician, one in which people still have trust. So the first point I want to make is that if we want to start addressing global problems as they manifest themselves locally in our municipalities, then we better stop depending so much on states and start looking more to cities for solutions. But clearly we can't do that one city at a time. Clearly we can't do that simply by suggesting that Rio or uh, Bogota or Paris or Los Angeles solve its problems. Clearly in a global interdependent world, we need intercity associations. We need intercity cooperation. And the great thing is that cities are natural collaborators. They're rooted in trade. They're built on water. 90% of cities are built on water. In fact, rivers, seas, oceans, lakes uh, around the world. They're hubs of transportation, hubs of cultural exchange. And as a result, cities are naturally transactional, naturally interactive one with the other in a way that states aren't. Moreover, far from competing and being rivals, cities prosper together. And finally, cities are also more than just a level of government. Cities are the elemental human community. It's where we're born, where we grow up, where we're educated, we get married, we get jobs, we play, we pray, we create, we do business, we get old, and we die. They are the communities that define us, the quintessential human community. They have to work. 
Last year, twice, the government of the United States of America closed. The odd thing was, a lot of people didn't even know this. But imagine closing Buenos Aires. Imagine closing Rio de Janeiro. Imagine closing Louisville, or Lille, France, or London, or Shanghai. You can't close a city. The city is where everything happens. Cities have never closed, not in plague, not in the Middle Ages. So cities are the quintessential human community. You can't close them. Very often they are much older than the states to which they belong. Cairo is older than Egypt. Boston's older than the United States. Paris is older than France. Bristol's older than England and so forth. Cities have a historicity. They are here to stay and it's where citizenship takes its primary meeting. So if we can begin to focus not on nation states, those rival dysfunctional entities that no longer know how to do much of anything and begin to think about cities and cities working together in networks, we may be able to establish a new optimism, a new hope for the future in solving problems. If we can get cities to work together, if we can take advantage of the myriad intercity associations with names that you've never heard of, UCLG. If I say UN, UNO, everybody knows what I'm talking about. If I say NATO, everybody knows what I'm talking about. If I say UCLG, most people wonder what's that. But the United Cities and Local Governments Association is over a hundred years old. It's the oldest and most important inner city organization in the world that nobody's ever heard of. So these institutions and associations are already present. But I think what's needed to focus cities on their possibilities of collaboration around many different issues is a new body, a global parliament of mayors, a kind of bottom-up, opt-in global institution that allows hundreds, even thousands of cities to meet on a regular basis, not necessarily in the flesh, it can be digitally, it can be on a virtual platform, but to meet, to talk out their problems, to find common solutions, to develop common strategies that can impact the market collectively and that can impact public opinion collectively and can begin to solve some of the problems that states have been so dysfunctional in approaching. Let me give an example here that will be close to the heart of the people at this conference because one of the areas in which there's a great need for inner city cooperation, and there's actually a lot of cooperation, is around issues of climate change, water resources, and the issues associated with them. We know that nation states in dealing with water issues have often created what some commentators call water wars. And we know that water wars in the future are likely to be even more critical, more dangerous uh, to our existence than the oil wars, the carbon wars, the wars for natural resources that we are currently fighting. But global warming has meant that large parts of the planet already in some trouble with respect to water tables and water resources are now in deep trouble, including the southwest of the United States. I flew recently from Los Angeles to New York over New Mexico, Nevada, the California Plains. All I saw was empty riverbeds, empty lake beds, not a drop of water anywhere in a region that already has a shortage of water. We know in Africa as the Sahara goes south and begins to impinge on nations like Rwanda and Uganda and Nigeria, those nations already under pressure for political and civic and economic reasons face also drastic water shortages and drought that make the civil conflicts, the tribal conflicts they face even worse. We know that unless we find ways to cooperate around not just managing scarce water resources, but ways to cooperate around limiting carbon emissions so that we don't get an increase in global warming, a rise in ocean levels at the same time we're getting a decline in water tables inside countries. This irony, far too much water on the coasts and far too little water in the agricultural regions where it's needed. Unless we deal with those issues, 
we are in for a very, very tough time, even if we solve some of the other economic and civic uh, issues that affect us around the world. So cities can do it, mayors can do it, the citizens of cities can take new hope in the possibility of democracy in a world where so many young people and immigrants and people of color don't believe in democracy anymore, but in cities where it still works, they can renew their hope that citizenship can make a difference. And by going back to the ancient polis where civilization was born, where democracy was born, and then going forward from the ancient polis to the new global cosmopolis, we have an opportunity to address the new world of interdependence, to address the problems we face across borders with cross-border cooperation, and finally maybe to give our children and grandchildren a chance to live in a sustainable, a just, and a peaceful world. Thanks very much. Good luck with your deliberations. I wish I was there to participate, but I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to talk with you.